Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we talk to you about the latest in the poultry uh, nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. My name is Sam Rocho. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition here at Auburn University and uh, joined by a uh, longtime uh, friend and, and uh, collaborator, Dr. Phil Smith from Tyson Foods. Very excited to have you uh, on the show today, Phil. Thank you for, for joining us. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. You bet. Well, hey, uh, before we get started on, on some of your day-to-day and the things that you're learning, can you give a little bit of your, uh, your career background and kind of what, what got you to your current uh, position there? You bet. Um, I started with uh, out of uh, college. I worked on a bachelor's and master's at Arkansas. Finished in like the December, January of 80, 81. Started at Tasty Bird, and then Tyson bought that company in like uh, 84. So as a poultry nutritionist, I worked the whole time and still working with uh, Tyson and moved here in 87. And when I moved here, I had a chance to work on my PhD. I went back and uh, I think in 89 and started working part-time and working full-time at Tyson, but part-time on my PhD under do- Dr. Talmadge Nielsen. Finished it in 95. And so I have my PhD from Arkansas. I have all three degrees from there and continued to work in research. I uh, also worked to the swine, the pork group at, at Tyson. Uh, uh, so just all sorts of mainly broiler breeder pullets and Everything to do with feeding the chickens, of course, is my main focus. And uh, I just live right outside of Fayetteville and, uh, and really had a great career. Yeah, yeah. The 2023 Arkansas Nutrition Conference Technical Symposium is brought to you by Kerry. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate. Let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates improve nutrient utilization. Gut health technologies differ by type. Innovative ways to feed and a novel technology that will light your performance on fire. See us August 29th in Little Rock. We try to give back for sure because they're a big part of the future and we need those people uh, to be successful and we want them to be, you know, so if they can learn from us, you know, I like to do formulation training. You know, we did some of that, you know, in U of A and uh, just getting to know the students, you know, in the research. Uh, it, uh, we challenge them a lot, but it's great interaction. Yeah. If we can, it's hard That's to right. get to know those people because, you know, they're focused on doing their research and uh, classes and we're focused on trying to make Tyson money. So, uh, but if you can get an internship or get experience with other nutritionists, it's it's invaluable. I think uh, you'll. Um, the, it just means a lot to get in the industry yeah, and connect absolutely. to it. You know what I mean. And I want the faculty to be the same way. I had that vision. You know, we should be, you know, collaborating more with the industry and universities. And it's hard to. You've got to. You've got to get funding, and we've got to get you know money to help you. But we've got to try to to keep our deal going. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been a part of the Arkansas Nutrition Group too. Uh, the the nutrition conference group who put on a great meeting. That's one of the, the big premier meetings in the U S now. So um, I know you put a lot of work into that as well. So it's a team effort. We have a great group of people on a committee and you know, then we've tried to hand it off to the younger people, but we still have a, you know, Tyson has a, and of course I have a tremendous, you know, feelings about it because it, it means a lot. It's, it's a world-class meeting. If you say it's, we have to keep that intensity up. It's not easy to get speakers, get worldwide speakers and, um, from anywhere and everywhere, we just it's just an honor to be on that committee. And if you get a chance, please attend it. It's coming up in August, the end of August this year. What are some of the big changes? And, and I guess I'll uh, follow that up with, you know, what are your day-to-day challenges now and where do you see things going from here? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, there's a lot of changes, a lot of genetics and improvement and growth rate feed conversion, carcass yield. Uh, so genetics and nutrition kind of go together, but I'm give a lot of credit to the geneticists for improving the growth rate Uh, struggles today. I'd say our livability and the breeder performance sometimes get, you know, it's a challenge for us. Uh, Just, you know, egg production, you know, got things. uh, And, and and of course what drives us is feed conversion and carcass yield. Those are the big things. And feed cost plays a big role in that. If we can uh, optimize that uh, to get the best performance, get the best, uh, you know, meat conversion and and that's what we're all after so the the challenge is now it seems like we're having more diseases uh of course nie is part of that you know no antibiotics ever uh 
where we're, we can't use uh, any growth promoting antibiotics or uh, some coccidiosalinomycin, for example, or onophores, uh, menensin, narsin, uh, losalicid. Those, if you can use those, it makes it a lot easier. So the, they're not using human medicine. So the NAHAMI, uh, no antibiotics of human importance, is a much easier way to go from gut health. And I guess gut health is supposed to be kind of what we're supposed to talk about a little bit about, you know, coxie is still a part of that. So if you use vaccines or using these chemicals or if you're um, able to use onophores uh, or combinations of the more options, the better. And it, it makes it simpler. We don't have as many uh, necrotic enteritis. Uh, but even with even with onophores and with all that, we still have issues um, these days of mortality. Uh, I don't know if it's just lameness. Just general uh, intercaucus stuff getting into the birds. Also, viral uh, challenges now. I mean, sometimes we get something that just tears the gut up. Uh, there's several of these viruses, real virus and other viruses like RSS type viruses that causes a bird to have uh, thin guts and watery guts and cause excretion, wet floors um, and toxins and things like that. And gosh, that's just a just a big array of things. How can we... Uh, help with all that maybe you know the, you, when you get all those viral things you get e coli you get enterococcus you get other things and, and systemic and once it gets systemic we have a lot of just mortality and it can happen late which we have a lot of feet in them so it hurts our feet conversion if we go down with lameness <clears throat> really bad kinky back uh, femoral head necrosis bco type stuff yeah what um uh... You know, in your time uh, that you've been working with Tyson, I mean, what are some of the changes that I know you can't talk specifics about formulas and things, but, you know, some of the changes in ingredient profiles, uh, you know, nutrient density, kind of what have been some of the changes over the last 20, 30 years? Yeah, this seems like the energy, the requirement seems to be lower. We're formulating differently, more for amino acids these days for for enhancing carcass yield and uh, so that tends to drive us a lot. So, but uh, it's still economics. You know, we can only put so much cost in. We got to get the, the performance back. We got to get weight gain, feed conversion, and carcass shield to pay for it. So we keep a close eye on that. You know, there's a lot of uh, benchmarking and things that measures us on that. How much we spend, feed cost being, you know, 60, 65% gets a huge impact on anything we do on cost per pound live at least. So I'd say that the, you know, the birds, you know, energies maybe kind of come crept down or the way we're valuing ingredients. We use, we try to use a lot of alternate ingredients as much as we can. We can, we'll use bakery meal and DDGs, uh, hominy, all assortment of things, uh, you know, other alternate grains, wheat or whatever, if it prices in. So if we can handle it in the meal, um, and more amino acids, probably trying to supplement was, I didn't think about the, Threonines being widely used, some valine, maybe some isoleucine and arginine at times. So trying to balance the diet was certainly there's pressure on that in the environment, you know, excretion of nitrogen and cost. If we can, if we can, and gut health and overall performance, if we can use those alternate things and, uh, and get, get the performance that we need. Yeah, sure. I know uh, Tyson, you know, obviously has different protein divisions, beef and pork. And so you have a lot of uh, opportunities around feed ingredients and yes. animal proteins. And, yeah. you know, we see restrictions in, in the EU being lifted on animal proteins. Um, kind of, you know, is that something that you've generally used over the years? And, you know, how do you feel that fits into no uh, NAE yeah. type program? Yeah. yeah, if you have an NAE program with, a, uh, you know, uh, no animal protein or no animal fat. If, ooh, you've double whammied yourself there a little bit because we use a lot of our own poultry fat. We use a good bit of meat and bone meal, beef meat and bone meal. Uh, we can use swine uh, or seen meat and bone meal too. We do have uh, some companies that require us to do all veg diets. And the fat side is really hard too because you have to get um, soy oil or canola or corn oil or some other oil. Um, soap stocks are possible as well, but they usually cost a lot more. And um, I don't have anything against it. It's just the the, the cost of it, I guess. Uh, on the on the oil side, uh, that, that's a great question. Yeah, we're dealing with that too. Um, it has come down a little bit in the last. It seems the price has come down just recently, but it may go right back up. So right, yeah. 
Very good. So with, uh, you know, these changes of, of prioritizing gut health, uh, you know, changes in different dynamics and markets around ingredients we talked about, is there anything that you're doing now that, you, you, you know, you never thought you would be doing in your career as far as uh, the type of products or the type, you know, the ways that you're formulating or even the criteria that you're, you know, formulating around? Yeah, we've tried many feed additives for alternate for, you know, alternate things that helps gut health. You know, so there's a, t- a whole list of these phytobotanicals, um, yeast cell wall products, uh, minerals, vitamins, uh, enzymes and combinations of and I haven't t- tannins and just on and on. Uh, I have nothing against those things uh, that we, we we've used some of those things. We still do um, in some short chain, middle chain fatty acids products uh, all have some benefit. It may help with gut health when we don't have any, uh, we aren't allowed to use uh, antibiotics, uh, feed grade antibiotics. So yeah, we've tried the, lots of those and still do today. Uh, with onophores, it seems to be less of an issue. Uh, they they help us a lot with that, but still yet, we still have problems and we try, we try them for all kinds of things. Uh, so I'd say enterococcus has been the number one just thorn, but anything that messes up gut health, stress, hot weather, hot birds, and loose junctions, you get you get those uh, bacteria across and where they shouldn't get in, the, they'll get in the bone and stuff and tissue and cause uh, quite a bit of mortality. To, and, and it's just frustrating because uh, you're picking up a bunch of big birds that were good a few days ago and now they've and there's nothing you can do about it much it's it's a grower relations and it's challenging animal welfare challenging too for us how do you deal with that right yep and you mentioned heat stress i mean we obviously we have a lot better housing now um, yes. but we also have you know genetics that uh you know they they have a high metabolism high growth rate they produce a lot of heat too i mean do you think uh managing heat stress is going to continue to be a big issue Yes, yes. I mean, of course, these birds are putting out a lot of BTUs, and we we need a lot of air movement. And in the hot summer, like we had this last year, was a oh, it was an, it's a challenging thing to deal with the heat stress. And of course, you know, you've tried arginine, you tried some things. Um, there's peppers and things. There's other things that might help with blood circulation, uh, aspirin type things like effects that help us deal with it. But yeah, it's. Uh, that drives it drives feed intake down. We need we need good feed intake and good growth. And these birds get really big, and we're deboning these big big birds. It's uh this is a huge stress on the heat's a stress. Even in the like we're in now, it's starting to cool off, but we still need uh, ventilation. And of course, gas prices are high, so people tend to keep uh, the air quality, not only the temperature, humidity. It's it's, it's a multifaceted deal when you talk about heat stress. Yep, yep. Um, I'm confident that. Uh, you know, well, the poultry industry is the way it is is got a great future. We're doing honorable feed in the world, and there's couldn't ask for a better deal than that. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, you bet. No, thank you, Phil. I really enjoyed it, and and always happy to spend some time with you. And, and this is this is great information, and it's it's really neat to see. You know, we talk a lot of technical things, but you know, to talk with someone such as yourself who's in there every day. You know, dealing with the the daily battles of these things, it's a very challenging and, and dynamic deal so so appreciate the insight there thank you all right well uh thanks everyone if you ever have any uh feedback or comments on additional guests you would like to see um uh, please send it in uh, if you want to follow the show please make a point to subscribe uh, and we look forward to seeing you the next time and thanks again to dr phil smith hey everyone we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week and if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us feel free to email the research link uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com that's hello at wisenetics.com and look forward to hearing from you